Hello, uh, good evening and welcome to this uh, live discussion related to uh, opportunities in uh, geotechnical engineering. So we received uh, uh, queries from few uh, engineers, few students, uh, uh, like what are the career opportunities uh, in geotechnical uh, engineering? Uh, so thereafter, we, we thought of uh, conducting uh, some kind of a group meeting. Uh, so with that intention, we launched uh, one uh, registration form uh, in social media. And in fact, we started receiving a huge uh, response. And there are many, many interesting questions uh, we, which were uh, suggested uh, by the uh, registered participants. And the number, uh, in fact, uh, increased uh, so that we uh, thought of conducting a live session on uh, YouTube. So in uh, today's conversation, we have picked up a few interesting points uh, on which we will have a brief discussion. And again, we are planning a similar kind of a discussion within a one week of time so that whatever balance points are there, that also we will try to address as well as whatever you'll be uh, putting your uh, additional points through this live ch chat that also we will uh, take it up. OK. Yes. Uh, hello, uh, Narayan. Uh, welcome to this uh, li live discussion. And for this uh, uh, discussion, we will be having uh, Vivek Mitra, uh, who is a senior geotechnical engineer from uh, VKM Geotechnics. And he is having uh, more than 25 years of experience in the field of geotechnical uh, engineering field. OK, so uh, let us welcome uh, Vivek Mitra uh, in this uh, unique live uh, discussion. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, Vivek Mitra. How Good are you? evening, Bhavin. I am fine. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I, we, we were just uh, talking that uh, there are many yeah. interesting points, here, you know, which have, have been suggested uh, by the registered participants. So in this See? session, we'll be uh, picking up a few interesting points. Uh, yes, and of yes, course, yes. we'll be doing uh, the whatever interesting questions we have received, uh, we'll be just putting on the screen and uh, then uh, we'll be sharing our own experience related to those questions. And we'll be also requesting participants parallelly that they can also put uh, additional doubts, please, as well as they can also share their experience uh, through uh, through the uh, live yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yes. Bhavin, before taking uh, questions, I want to thank you because yeah. I was actually going uh, back to um, my memory when I was a graduate engineer. So yes. that time, see, the, I was having a lot of curiosity. I mean, mm -hmm. where to go, which line to choose. Of course, uh, geotechnical engineering was my interest. In fact, uh, I have chosen civil engineering rather than uh, uh, other uh, branches of the engineering. So that was my interest, but uh, slowly, slowly it has developed into geotechnical engineering. So mm -hmm. I am really thankful to you because I have not seen uh, this type of conversation on social media. I mean, never seen. So this is the interest we, we need to generate about the geotechnical engineering. And yes. uh, uh, really, I am amazed that you are so much concerned about this particular field as a structural expert. Because you know seriousness of this geotechnical engineering. Because everything, yes. every structure is actually ultimately is going to found on a soil. And there you have a lot of uh, uncertainties. Okay. That's why, you know, we keep factor of safety in the range of 3 to 2.5. Because that this material is still we are evolving. How this its behavior is. Because... It's really not like a steel material or a concrete material. It is, it is worse than that. In most of the cases, I am not talking about the solid rocks, but uh, soils, maybe sandy soil or maybe clay soils. It behavior is quite erratic. So that's why you know, it's very important to have this conversation, this discussions, and we need to keep interest in our young civil engineer about this geotechnical yes. engineering. Yes. Because, you know, yeah. then only, see, the nowadays, uh, you know, the people are getting aware of this field. So they are really curious about it. So let us have those conversations going on so right. that, you know, right. people are more attracted to this uh, the particular branch of civil engineering. Yeah. Yes. 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 Y
nahi as you rightly said see whenever we talk about safety of the structure and the cost optimization then interface Absolutely. between geotechnical and structural engineering is of paramount importance paramount and now uh, we have received you know similar kind of comment the, from uh, narayanan yeah. so he is a structural yeah. engineer by education Absolutely. but predominantly yeah. working on geotechnical engineering absolutely so i am very happy for him yeah yeah okay <laughs> Okay, so before we start, uh, I'll I'll just uh, quickly tell. Uh, see, yeah. uh, whenever we talk about civil engineering, then civil engineering is a uh, mother of all engineering. That's what uh, generally I used to say. And uh, whenever we talk about uh, civil engineering, it is indeed a vast area, and that characteristic is actually applied to all branches of civil engineering. So with that logic, geotechnical engineering is also a very vast area, right? Very vast. Very very very, uh, very vast. Vast. and you know the some of the projects now i should talk about the latest trend so you mm-hmm. talk about offshore winds mm-hmm. so it is predominantly structures and geotechnical mm-hmm. and this is the modern ten trend is going on worldwide so mm-hmm. you, whether you talk about the uh, japan where they mm-hmm. are mostly rely, rely upon the thermal and as well as the nuclear power till date now they are slowly switching over to uh, this offshore wind and offshore wind you have lot of scope of geotechnical engineering of course that is structural engineering is also there then mm-hmm. you know they you have certain areas where you have problem of limitation of land so you you are resorting to land reclamation so this is all also a subject of geotechnical engineering only you yes. have uh, in india especially you have vast uh, area of airports are there so, so again so your technical will be a major uh, so, area of the uh, so you have already started uh, touching uh, to our first yeah. question uh, yeah this this is uh, like what are the benefits of joining uh, geotechnical engineering field yes yes so to see you know that's why you know it's first of all it's a very new subject if you will consider all engineering subjects quite new subject and uh, that uh, the it is not that much definitive you know that's why you know if people are passionate about it then there are lot of challenges and you know the you can have lot of evaluation in this you can innovate on, on this subject so that's why you know you should actually the people should join this stream of course they should passionate about the subject you know sometimes you know it happen that yeah this geotechnical we are not able to tackle but you know if you are going on studying on this and you i mean you learn about this subject it nothing like it so i have already i think uh, 26 27 years into the this field and i i am really enjoying it and i am daily learning new things about it Yes. so the, absolutely in all the engineering subject this is the case if, we, if a right. person is learner right. he is going to learn uh, learn it daily so it's really a challenging subject and if you are really passionate about this subject nothing like it yeah mm-hmm. yes this was one more interesting question like what are the skills generally required to become uh, the geotechnical engineer yeah uh, see uh, that's why you know first of all you should have that passion about the subject yes. okay and you know till date i am getting new new problems and you need to update about the literature about yes. the problems okay so the, the i will tell you recently i was uh, working in a very soft soils so i i never encountered before that that was uh, from 2015 okay so till 2015 i was having experience of around 20 years but i have not encountered that kind of soft soil so i need to do lot of study on this and then uh, i could actually make my thought about in this interesting topics and there are so many other things like you know mining is one of the subject where uh, this is only geotechnical engineering so how to support the system there is a huge challenges especially if it's in underground mining you know because mm. there are lot of uncertainties and uh, you need to take that risk and you should you have to go ahead with your production and all so mining is also very challenging and it's uh, really most of the work is in the geotechnical engineering also 
and that's why you know the, you need to be very much curious you should be actually updated about the latest technology and you should always keep with you mentors that is very important mm. mentors maybe you will be finding it in your organization itself if because he may be from the same stream like jo technical engineering or maybe if you are alone in that area I mean in your organization you may have to contact other people men outside your organization they will definitely either it will be a paid mentor or maybe if he is willing to do it actually if the free of cost then it's uh, your luck so that's why you know you need mentor and then so you yeah. so you mean to say that uh, networking is required right curiosity Absolutely. has to be curiosity there and passion yeah. towards this subject is subject. the most that is most important. you want to become That's a geotechnical yes. engineer right absolutely right. absolutely right yeah yeah Yeah. Oh, this was one more question, which was uh, mm. generally written by a few engineers in a different language. Mm. Uh, that how yeah. to survive as a fresher in the uh, industry? Yeah. See, uh, I actually assumed myself as a fresher in early nineties. Yes. Okay. So that time, you know, the you are you are having in your mind so much uncertainties. Okay. so like you know the pile designing i have learned in one and half years I mean i was not getting chance to design the pile so it happened you know maybe i was mostly working on uh, some sort of a embankment design and all those stuff so mm. that happened so mm. the, you know the you you need to wait for your chances to come yes. okay and when one actually it has been given to you you should actually take the responsibility and you should actually do the things for your mm. organization so mm. then only you know people will be actually more comfortable with you and they will give you uh, new areas of your technical engineer to uh, tackle the things so that's yes. very important okay mm. and mm. of course you need to have your mentor there as well so that you know they will actually and you will be comfortable taking mm. any decision you should discuss with them that i am doing like this whether i should go ahead or not so the you know people will be helping you out so that's why you know that networking inside the organization maybe outside also or maybe mm. if you are active in social media you can actually the put your problem there is no hesitancy in that mm. if you are alone mm. in your stream in your organization you should actually come up with your curiosity openly yes and uh, you will be you will be seeing that you are able to solve your problems yeah. right so uh, i think in the earlier part of the career one should not focus on the uh, salary right the focus absolutely, should be on the, the knowledge yeah. right yeah 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 see there is a question of salary then you know if somebody is actually involving you mm. as an intern and maybe mm. he is not able to effort your actually expectation you, you mm. may actually for initial days you may go, do free of cost okay mm -hmm. because but in the process you are learning something and yes. that will be very advantageous for you mm -hmm. so no yes. hesitation if supposing somebody is not paying you and they are offering you something yes you go ahead mm -hmm. and uh, you can have some kind of exposure in the field okay and then uh, you may develop maybe based on this experience you may get chance in some other organization who right. knows yeah right and one more thing like for the internship also uh, the fresher yeah. should uh, look for a free internship wherever it is available yeah. right yeah yeah if uh, let's like yeah. say if they do not get yeah. the job in the initial period of time then i think Absolutely. it is a good uh, good way to approach, approach yeah. yes yes yeah ma you should approach proactively in the market or maybe in social media you should actually keep your intention clear that i am looking mm -hmm. for and i will not actually looking for any salary but i want to have exposure mm -hmm. in geotechnical engineering mm -hmm. so uh, you may get some kind of offer in this also so yes. in the process you will be at least started learning about the things yeah right right one more question came up is uh, is post graduation mandatory in your opinion to become a geotechnical engineer <laughs> see uh, i would like to share with you two very important example okay, okay. Uh, one is actually the i 
was involved in some certain projects and i was observed i was observing this person and he was lab in charge and uh, he was diploma in civil engineering but he was really passionate about this uh, engineering stream uh, geotechnical engineering and he did his ami so he was now graduate in engineering then he clear gate exam he he become post graduate in uh, the uh, geotechnical engineering and finally he did the phd so you know but it takes time i need to agree upon this that he, he it, it it needs little bit time but ultimately you know it is not necessarily that if you are passion about you are passionate about this geotechnical engineering subject you need not to have that post graduation in geotechnical engineering another example i will give you from one multinational company it, this person was b in civil engineering but he was right through involved in the geotechnical engineering activity so after 10 12 years he did his post graduation in geotechnical engineering and now he is a very very competent geotechnical engineer so the these type of examples are there but if you will ask that a civil a graduate in civil engineer and a post graduate in geotechnical engineering really it will be the post graduate in geotechnical engineering will be having demand no doubt about it but it is not mandatory that a geotechnical engineer should have a post graduation in geotechnical engineering. yes yeah yes yeah, so in short uh, after doing cross graduation yeah. definitely your domain or knowledge will be enhanced it is not mandatory enhanced. that you must do post graduation yeah. to become a geotechnical yeah. engineer yeah i will tell you uh, that you know the for the young engineers it may mm -hmm. sound little bit weird but uh, uh, if they are actually uh, going through a geotechnical investigation agency that is the very very good learning process for them okay. because see, they actually then they know about the material that is a very important in geotechnical engineering so mm -hmm. what is this geo material and mm. i have seen such a good profile they enter into geotechnical investigation agencies and now they are somebody is in hong kong somebody is in london they are, they are doing the tunnel design so mm. that that is having a fantastic profile you know yes. so the, but in geotechnical investigation agency you come to know about behavior of the material so mm. that is the very good point maybe and then you know even a b in civil engineering people mm. actually geotechnical investigation agency take this type of people yes. because they are having a general idea so sometimes you know in the geotechnical investigation agencies you need a management also management of the site also so they sometimes they find this uh, graduate in civil engineering are a better option for them so they promote this kind of people and then slowly slowly you can develop your uh, skills you do your post graduation in geotechnical engineering mm -hmm. and uh, and then you know you you uh, get, you are getting chances in on the way okay yeah. so sometimes it may they, they may require uh, your skill and then you may be in the consulting organization maybe mm -hmm. a good uh, geotechnical contracting or organization so mm -hmm. these options are always open for them yes yes so narayanan is just sharing that uh, he is a prime example of this incident Absolutely. he is mtech in structural engineering but now he is having uh, almost 7 years of Very experience good. in geotechnical he, engineering he is a prime example yes and he is basically mtech in structural oh, nice yes. yes so he may be having a very good actually combination because he knows the structural part and as well as the geotechnical part yes yeah. yes Yeah, this was an interesting question. Like, what kind of support, let's say, the freshers or students, uh, they may expect from the senior engineers uh, in in the profession of geotechnical engineering? See, uh, you know, the first of all, uh, when you are in the organization, you know, there may be so many cases. Okay, so as I am telling you, you may be alone in the organization. okay so then you know you have to look for your mentor outside your organization okay 
and uh, they may be a uh, 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 paid mentor or maybe a uh, mentor who is actually willing to pay um, uh, willing to actually assist you free of cost okay so that way you know the you can actually enhance uh, your rapport with this senior engineer and uh, see you know we as a fresher we are actually the new to the area so these experienced people having a lot of experience so they may guide you for your present problem whatever you are facing in the geotechnical project and again as i mentioned you earlier that networking networking is also a very important part so the supposing you are not able to solve your problem you may go to social media no problem or uh, then uh, you may really get help because uh, that other person may be having some similar kind of problem which you are facing uh, right now so they, he may be able to solve your problem so it is very much important to utilize yeah. the uh, accumulated intelligence of of say yeah. accumulative years together as an experience yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah. so one should not reinvent the wheel right <laughs> yes <laughs> yes 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 that's why we should connect with these uh, seniors within the organization outside the organization and i think networking absolutely. is a key as you rightly said absolutely yes, because absolutely. Uh, when you're talking about this area uh, it's yeah. a very vast field so I, I think even if somebody is let's say uh, spending the whole life then also they cannot yeah. master all areas of, of this discipline right absolutely right? So, absolutely so, yeah, yeah. Mm. And I think that's why uh, it is uh, very much important uh, uh, that networking should be initiated. And for uh, for the young engineers, I think uh, this is a good opportunity that they start uh, from uh, from a very early age. Like it was not told to us, right? <laughs> when absolutely, uh, when absolutely. You know, up. that's why I'm telling you that uh, you are the first person who is mm. taking this kind of initiative. You know. Because yes. when we were graduating, or maybe when we were doing the post graduation course, mm -hmm. there was nobody to actually tell us what to do mm -hmm. ahead and what kind of maybe that kind of social media presence was not there. But in fact, mm -hmm. I don't think that even on a one to one basis, the, this type of actually the courses were there, or maybe somebody is uh, coming and suggesting me you know, what is what should be your uh, career progression so you are mm. doing a wonderful job yes mm. thank you yes, thank you thank you yeah yeah uh, this is a question like uh, let's say uh, as a geotechnical engineer uh, let's say somebody has established a new firm and yeah. now how to get a new projects who has just uh, uh, recently started their practice what is your take this on this? This is a very, very interesting question and very important question. See, mm -hmm. till date, 95% of the time, what I am observing that people tend to give what they actually know. And that is not right. See, we need to go with the client. And what is his expectation from us that we actually we should understand. That is very important. See, the technical marketing is something different than the normal marketing. So uh, they are not interested about your turnover or maybe what actually uh, uh, what kind of good skill you have. Because see, he is why he's approaching to you. He is having certain problems with you and he will come to you with his problem. And you should be able to understand what problem he is facing, whether he will, you will be able to solve his problem. Okay. And if you see as a fresher, maybe as an early engineer, you may not be able to uh, uh, tell him that I had I did this kind of uh, problem solving previously. But if you can assure him that I am having the skill, I am having that guts and I am having that passion to solve your problem, he will be comfortable. Maybe he will take a chance and he will give you that project. So that way, you know, you should have that uh, technical marketing. OK, so then, you know, the client will also be happy and you you should always remember this is I'm talking about a consulting, but geotechnical investigation agencies. OK, so I have seen I have actually working in a geotechnical investigation program. I have seen two kind of investigator. One was using very modern rig, sophisticated equipment. So, and another one was very shabby, 
very uh, a different kind of so see i will definitely will compare that did this guy this investigator is a good investigator he should be rely upon and in future you know if i am having some work i will actually prefer him if my budget per my permit of course so th that is the actually tendency normally so if you are giving value addition to the client so he similarly a jet technical contractor okay he if he is uh, employing a modern equipment and he is actually giving you efficiency his quality work his safety about his work then definitely you know client is going to prefer this kind of contractor not the shabby one so everyone see if you are there in business for the long term not for the short term gain maybe you will get today a monetary advantage maybe you have yeah you will be getting a monetary monetary benefit for the timing but what is happening next time he will not prefer you because he has dealt with you and he is not happy with you. so that one should keep in mind okay and then you know again we will come to that point like for the new project or new engineer he should have that networking okay so just proactively you need to call still we are, what we are doing we are also proactively call our prospective client whether he is having some work for our kind of uh, uh, skills so he will if he is but he remembers you if that work is not there for that time he will not tell you anything but in the future he may contact you okay so that kind of thing you so, need to do so, yeah so you you have touched a very interesting uh, uh, not that, that is a technical marketing right? and, and i think that is a key for uh, getting a new new projects and, new, and new as you rightly said that we must understand that what are the pain areas of the uh, customer or say prospective Absolutely. client and, and then you do prepare a kind of a content or say if you yeah. can start approaching client Absolutely. Uh, yeah. as, as if you have the solutions for their pain areas uh, then Absolutely. really that is a key key for getting the projects right yes yes see i have seen this big geotechnical contract mm. see they will tell you i have uh, i am having this much turnover okay mm. and i i have done here and no 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 he is not interested mm. at all client is mm. not interested at all in the all those things yes. he is interested in by i am having this project or maybe i am facing this problem whether mm. you are able to solve this problem mm. so how one need to approach as a geotechnical contractor one mm. need to make a specific presentation for this kind of problem maybe previously he he did that that kind of uh, project so he should showcase those kind of projects so maybe yes. it will be very limited like two or three projects only but client would be very very much impressed because he will actually align with you because mm. he is looking for this kind of thing only he is not yes. interested at all what about your turnover no no yes. no he is not interested he is he is looking for your capability you you are mm. knowledge of the subject and how you will be able to handle his problem okay yes. yeah yeah this is very very interesting question like is only software knowledge is adequate as a geotechnical engineer or something else is also required see problem starts from where problem is start from the job details of a uh, mm. agencies like whoever is the maybe consulting agencies mm. who are requiring this geotechnical engineer and they will name certain uh, software that he mm. you should be actually you should able to handle this software okay? okay but what is hidden there that you should have basic knowledge of geotechnical engineer okay yes. so me young in civil engineers what their tendency is they will learn all kind of software but we we need to actually look inside us whether we have that actually the analysis or maybe whether we will be able to handle this geotechnical engineering concept or what is the clay what is sand whether we know about it or not see i will actually share with you very interesting story story about this you know the it's a big uh, multi i think number one multinational of the world and uh, they have used a big software this is a top boss software in geotechnical engineering 
and uh, the stratification one should uh, uh, what we should uh, they should have used is play stratification but all their inputs for the send is stratification so what would they do they from the beginning they have done the mistakes okay so see there is no use of uh, uh, this kind of software if you are actually inputting a uh, uh, initial uh, uh, parameters as a wrong parameters okay so one should be very much careful and you know you are getting a very good pages of finite element analysis and all that is all all good provided you are clear about the concept and you know there are lot many ground preparation is needed if you are using a geotechnical model see uh, my recommendation would be you finer is the point like you know every depth you are having certain value of the strength parameter then only you will be able to put that in the software otherwise you know the, if you are giving within 10 meter distance one parameter it's it will be quite erratic compared to a small small distance and have that parameters so software will also because ultimately you know software is made by mankind only so At, at the most, you should actually optimize it. Its use. It's. It is not like that. You know that software, so just put one uh, value and it is, it is coming out the result. No, no, it's not like that. So the software is important, but your basic knowledge of geotechnical engineer is more important. Yes, yeah, that's quite uh, quite interesting thing that. Uh, mm. the fundamental is very important right uh, before operating yeah, any software yeah. right yeah mm. okay okay so the if i go to the uh, next question one minute yeah yeah the Uh, what may be the few typical technical questions uh, for which geotechnical engineer should prepare for the interview see uh, just uh, actually it's very intelligent questions from you are and, and we should also be very intelligent about it okay normally you know they will not ask about in interview any calculation and all because you see mm. the, even uh, you, it will take lot of time and all so fundamentally you know even academics also we actually not giving that much stress on the geotechnical investigation mm. and you know till date i am finding that is the prime subject for geotechnical engineering geotechnical investigation mm. the interviewer may ask that what should be the frequency of the boreholes what should be the depth how you will decide the depth of borehole where to terminate the borehole they will ask about the cpts like a general question okay and then they may go for a basic material like what is sand what is clay what should be the strength of a stiff clay or what should be the strength of the soft clay like that maybe the dense sand or uh, uh, maybe basalt what should be the ucs value so uh, these are the value you know which is actually frequently being used in our uh, the profession frequently yes. so that's why you know these kind of question may be asked during the interview they will they are not going to ask you about the slope stability analysis mean simple basic principles are uh, uh, they will ask but they are not going to ask you to do the calculation and all no no they will not do so that's why you know you should be uh, prepared like this only so geotechnical investigation is very very important or maybe a uh, particle size distribution uh, what should be particle uh, below 75 micron or uh, maybe beyond 75 micron to uh, what should be the sizes of sand uh, what should be the size sizes of pebbles or maybe gravel well graded mm -hmm. sand like that so mm -hmm. these are the basic question uh, that can be asked during yes. the time of interview and indirectly yeah. also interviewer will try to assess that uh, are you really yeah. passionate about uh, your discipline or not isn't it <laughs> that is the most important point okay so sometimes you it may happen that uh, you are not giving all the answers correctly but mm. uh, if you are really showing is your passion about the subject yes it is mm. actually positive point for you mm. absolutely mm. right mm. Yeah.
The next question is uh, how to enhance knowledge and skills uh, to become the competent geotechnical engineer. So let's say in a career progression, how to Absolutely. enhance the knowledge and skills here? See, uh, first of all, all you know, uh, you have to be updated about the subject. That's a very important point. So as I told you, you know, sometimes, you know, our codes are not also uh, able to solving our problem. OK, so in that case, what you need to do, you need to do the study on the latest literature on the subject. OK, so so yeah, maybe it may be handling the problems, your problem. So you need to be a little bit kind of a research oriented, you know. So then in that case, you know, it, it, it solves your problem to a certain extent. And then, you know, side visits. Side visits mm -hmm. are very important. Yes. Side visits are very important. You, as a geotechnical engineer, so till date, I think mm -hmm. I have having around 30 to 35% of my years in side visits. Mm -hmm. So it actually, so many things, uh, so many doubts actually clear. Mm -hmm about the problem you are mm. really geotechnical is really associated with the site so mm. you need to and you should be ready it sometimes mm. you know sometimes failures also occurs and then yes. uh, you need to actually learn about it, why this failures has occurred and you mm. then you can actually have that lesson learned that this was the problem that's why this failure has occurred so mm. that's why you know site visits are very important okay. mm. yeah yes yeah, so meanwhile uh, Olao has joined from Goa, so he's a senior practicing structural engineer in Goa. And he has mentioned this point that uh, indeed basics is the need and we need Absolutely. someone who can find a proper solution. And the structural Absolutely. consultant needs a geotechnical consultant who, who uh, can uh, complement. Right. He's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. You know, and uh, you, most of the people think that uh, we, this structural engineer is an isolated subject and geotechnical engineering is an isolated subject. It is not mm -hmm. the case. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, our whatever good structures we are designing, it is actually on the soil. And the soil is having factor of safety is 3, 2.5. So we need to be very much careful. So there should be a lot of interaction with the between the structural and geotechnical guys. Yes. So that's that that is actually to solve your problem. You know, it is not yeah. that we need to do it in isolation. So that is very important. Is a is a very right point to raise. Right. Yeah. Right. And Narayanan has also touched upon these areas related to yeah. factor of safety. And always factor of safety is a point of a debate, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, in a structural engineering, generally that factor is 1.5, he says. But in a geotechnical engineering, that factor is ranging from, let's say, 2.5 to 3. Yes. Absolutely. So because, you know, this Joe material is having a lot of uncertainties. Yes. So that's why, you know, you factor a lot. You are mm. not sure about this material. See, you are you are number one sure about steel. So steel, mm -hmm. you have very less factor of safety. Mm -hmm. Then comes the concrete, and finally the, comes the yes uh, the geo material. And you know, if you are doing a lesser investigation, you know, your mm -hmm. uncertainty increases. Sometimes right. you know it happens that uh, client is not willing to pay because mm -hmm. you know the we problem is with us only because we are not making him aware that how to actually I mean what are the benefits of the proper geotechnical investigation yes it is not like you know the uh, we are spending his money we are actually mm. value adding his uh, project mm. one for the prime is for the safety and second mm. one is the economy mm. okay so mm. if he is doing the geotechnical a proper geotechnical investigation then you know the, you can play with the factor of safety maybe 2.5 Mm. Yeah, yeah. the same thing he has mentioned in comment also yeah. that people generally mm. assume that geotechnical engineers are over conservative. Now, mm. how to convince them that we are not and how yeah. to justify this higher factor of safety? Absolutely. So that's why, you know, that that is the uncertainty of the material. Right. You know, uncertain. Mm. You are not certain about, you know, the I have given you uh, example previously, Bhavin, that mm. uh, you have one small diameter shaft. 
maybe mm. i would say it's a 5 uh, inch or maybe 2 and 1/2 inch shaft you just mm. put it in the uh, soil it will actually penetrate that mean it is getting giving you the settlement okay yes. now compared to that you come up with a 1 meter by 1 meter area yeah. and then you try mm. to insert it will actually compare to that it will uh, settle less now you come with a 3 meter by 3 meter it will mm. actually give you mm. that so that's why you know this is the uncertainty is of the geo material so, so there are one need parts. to take into account yes. yeah so there are two parts to it one you rightly said yeah. that soil itself is uh, uh, is a heterogeneous material or there are a lot of uncertainties about it uncertainty uh, yeah. uh, then secondly yeah. we are not exploring the entire site it's just only few random location where we we are taking the uh, samples yeah. or we are testing yeah. the soil yeah. and i think yeah. third part is the soil investigation Uh, methodology also uh, like uh, that the methodologies are also not uh, perfect so each perfect. Uh, method is having their own limitations and pros and cons right uh, like, so Absolutely. mixing up Absolutely. all these things to, together is actually yielding to this kind of a higher factor of safety a higher factor of safety absolutely right. 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 yes 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 yeah this uh, was one of the question like uh, what may be the opportunities as a geotechnical engineer in a remote cities let's say where bigger scale projects are, are not coming up see this is a very important point being raised you know because uh, see as per my opinion every project should have a geotechnical report okay mm. so now suppose say for example you have a very smaller area maybe a mm. 500 square meter of development or maybe a 250 square meter of development you know mm. you are doing say for example a spread foundation you have mm. pits over there so mm. better to go observe those pits and you can have a pocket penetrometer testing you can have that mm. shear strength of the stratification you can have mm. that evaluation of the bearing capacity Mm. okay so this is for maybe tire 3 tire 4 cities where you mm. know it it has to be make mandatory i would say because so many times it failures occur and uh, client is also not aware because we are not making him aware basically mm. and um, we need to make aware client that we are saving his money you know sometimes you know you don't have any data uh, client will ask the site side building what is the foundation depth 2 and 1/2 meter this side it is 3 meter so go for 2.75 it is not like that you know you don't know what kind of stratification you are in country so one should have a investigation basis on the area of the project i am not talking about to go for a rigorous bore holes and all no say for say for example for 200 square meter area you can have kind of a star uh, uh, borehole location like in corners four boreholes in the center one borehole so you are uh, and especially when it's a piling side it's a really mm. risky because supposing you are putting your entire structure on this soft stratification it is going to settle and it may create a problem so one should actually need to aware uh, basically the operator like the client or maybe who is the owner of the project that this kind of problem may occur and one should actually orient him about the safety because whatever good design you will do for the super structure if foundation you are not confident about the foundation then there lies a problem so maybe your structures are settling and uh, maybe sometimes you know uh, to actually overcome that risk there is a tendency of going more deeper in, especially in case of the pile foundations okay so pile foundation people may go for maybe if we normal i would if we have done the investigation it should be 15 meter but uh, to be on the safer side if they have not done any investigation they may go for 20 meter so it's a loss for the owner basically yes. so there is a huge scope for the remote area, remote cities that like tire 3 tire 4 cities to go for a project like area wise investigation maybe for the small area 200 square meter or maybe 300 go for the pocket pentometer testing at least and have one geotechnical report so that mm. it will be actually evaluated with a proper people and they will be able to tell you yes it's okay it's safe it's no mm. problem mm. 
so, so something something is so something is always better than nothing right nothing absolutely so <laughs> it should be mandatory for all the projects like yes. e plus 3 and especially you know these are the uh, project residential kind of project so mm -hmm. supposing some collapse is occurring you are you know, I mean, you are actually subjected to human losses or nothing else mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's why it's very important yes yes okay narayanan has put an interesting point uh, that there are lots and lots of solar plants are now coming up in the remote areas in india and the geotechnical consultants in second level cities can offer economical geotechnical investigation even i also experienced in few projects wherever solar plants are coming up generally those, those soils are not good so uh, sometimes they were coming on the expansive soil sometimes they were coming on the soft uh, soft kind of soil uh, so there is a greater role which uh, needs to be played by geotechnical engineers for this year even if uh, the structure is very light <laughs> absolutely absolutely see uh, we have actually seen one case you know that was the uh, vietnam project so they were facing a lot of problem so yes. you know the and once you have acquired this land see you cannot run away with this land so you have to make your solar, solar power plant over there so yes. basic treatment is needed in this mm -hmm. kind of soil maybe you know uh, i think you may guide me i think mm -hmm. foundation depth is also not that much in these cases so maybe a shallower uh, kind of treatment is okay i think and now neither it's a heavy load mm -hmm. maybe except uh, the maybe admin building or for that project or maybe some kind of um, electrical mm -hmm. station or otherwise it is uh, all uh, many smaller loads uh, if it is actually coming on a swelling uh, and a highly soft soil, then that mm -hmm. much portion need to be treated, and then you may go ahead with your project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, yes, yeah. He is telling one more point: like geotechnical consultants in major cities are pretty uh, expensive. If we are local, maybe we can provide a similar service for a lesser cost. Absolutely. This is actually case to case or uh, maybe subjective. So what kind of geotechnical consultation they are asking for? Uh, okay, uh, that is also important. So uh, yes, it is always better to be competitive. Mm -hmm. So you may also may you may get the mm -hmm. job. So mm -hmm. uh, but uh, importance or maybe if it is critically your man hours are more for that particular work. Maybe yes. a kind of a purely geotechnical project, maybe a mm. reclamation project. So mm. your efforts are enormous for that. So you have to charge accordingly, you know. Mm. And mm. Uh, if it's a smaller kind of project, yes, you need to be very competitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Manuel Olao has uh, asked that uh, from where he can get a pocket penetrometer. Uh, in fact, earlier also we discussed in this day, I remember and uh, he is having one but in due course uh, the the spring is corroded can you please help in this matter yeah yeah sir we are actually after this so we are contacting organization to have one kind of a presentation and then uh, it will be good but uh, somehow it has not got better but we are on the job so maybe very soon we will get back to you yeah mm. okay Okay, the entrepreneurship in geotechnical engineering the request to share your views on this see uh, again i will get back to my earlier reply that mm. uh, you know you should always think to give value addition to the client right what is his problem i'm not talking mm. about only consulting whether you are a geotechnical investigator or mm. maybe you are a geotechnical contractor See, you need to give value addition to the client and mm. uh, you know the client is having certain problem that's why mm. you know he is approaching you okay mm. or maybe you also proactively roam around the market if certain mm. somebody is having some geotechnical project coming and if some problems are there you mm. should actually approach them and you should convince him mm. that yes we are there to solve your problem Okay, mm. so that's why you know that kind of entrepreneurship one should have, uh, mm. not like a usual marketing stuff. No, no, no. Client is not mm. looking for that. Client is mm. looking 
i am having this kind of project or maybe i am facing this kind of problem whether you are mm-hmm. able to solve my problem or not mm-hmm. so that and value addition whether you can give him some economy okay mm-hmm. like you know in geotechnical there is lot of scope <clears throat> we are having uh, uh, tankages so normally mm-hmm. you know artificial tankages are sitting on the earthen mm-hmm. foundations mm-hmm. so the one should have uh, those kind of intelligence to convey to client that yes we are actually saving you this uh, this much of money or maybe a uh, kind of a economical ground, ground improvement to him so that you know he he may be looking for a pile foundation okay yes but uh, yeah. if you are suggesting a proper uh, uh, ground improvement methodology he may be saving in his um, uh, money so that kind of issue, you know inter- and that's why you know you should know about the subject Mm. Okay, what kind of ground improvement will be needed for which kind of stratification? That is very important. Mm. If you are encountering a sandy stratification, what kind of uh, ground improvement is needed over there? Or maybe mm. a soft stratification, what kind of uh, ground improvement you can have? Or maybe you know you can go certain extent to have a, a, a mock uh, ground improvement procedures over there, and mm. you can have mm. that uh, thing established in the writing like a kind of a report that. this much ground improvement we have achieved so so, so in like short uh, in, in short i, I think uh, for uh, for becoming a entrepreneur in a geotechnical engineering uh, you should focus on uh, on a problem which is being faced in the industry and then Absolutely. create a solution unique solution for that and then i think yes, there are yes. very very great opportunities available in the market yes yes right? yeah see mm-hmm. value addition is the one terminology yes. one should use okay yes. value yes. addition to the client so value mm. addition then yeah, under this category what comes comes mm. the quality safety mm. and economy okay mm. so if you are giving these things to client nothing like it they will definitely approach you or maybe you have done one project successfully for them yes you are there mm. to get the repeated projects from them. yeah no doubt about it yes, yes. okay now since we are talking a little bit about ground improvement so miraj has asked that uh, what is your suggestion uh, to pursue a career in a ground improvement as most large infra projects are having a ground improvement as a requirement now absolutely he is having very good thought about it like yeah. you know you we are having all this area like there is a scope of port everywhere now with this sagar yeah. mala things comes into picture so you mm. will be having this uh, ground improvement either they will be in the kind of a marine clay area or maybe you need to have a kind of a reclamation and then you need to improve it so the you are absolutely right you should have uh, that kind of uh, career in your mind and you will get ample work in future maybe uh, airports also coming mostly in the coastal area or maybe because you know there is always crunch of land in certain key cities so that expansion is actually required a quite amount of reclamation so yes you have a quite good of uh, good scope in future for ground improvement technology mm-hmm. or maybe you know the certain uh, areas where uh, you have uh, even on the land locked area you will have certain kind of a soft tech, uh, soft soils especially mm. you know in gujarat area or maybe in the eastern part of our country so you have mm. a, a alluvium there or very soft alluvium and yes. uh, you may yes. not sometimes you know the client is uh, looking for uh, there is a important stage of course you should uh, rest those things on the piling after the analysis and for the rest of the area in a plant you are having uh, pavement or maybe the green area so uh, one should have that kind of a improvement for the material or maybe a container yard so the mm. loading is not not that much so you can have that ground improvement over there yes mm. yeah but there is a huge scope when we talk about ground huge improvement. scope huge scope yes 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 okay this is uh, i think a technical question technical consultant has given a particular pressure a settlement value Uh, consolidation settlement uh, and the permissible settlement is 40 percentage of that value simply give allowable pressure is uh, 
See, they, they, he will, uh, we, will uh, we will consult with him privately, yeah. maybe yes. if he is willing to have that. Yes. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are all um, a couple of more technical questions are coming up, so that we will discuss yeah. separately. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. This was one question. Like, as a freelancer, can we associate with the established geotechnical engineering firms? See, there is huge scope. You know, sometimes what happened? Geotechnical firms themselves are very much engaged with so many variety of projects, so mm. they are not having people to work upon it. So mm. you may be actually associated with them for maybe three months assignment, maybe six months assignment as a freelancer. They mm. will readily and sometimes, you know, big organization having a big man over rates. So yes. sometimes it's a problem with them. So they mm. actually try to curtail this, this thing from their end. So there is also ample opportunity for uh, uh, freelancer in a geotechnical engineering. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay, so now we have reached uh, to 7.55 p.m. So five yeah. minutes are left. Okay. So yes. meanwhile, we can request uh, all the participants. If you have any further queries, doubts or questions related to this, you can, can post it. And definitely, we, this was just a uh, small uh, initiation. Uh, there will be a number of this kind of a discussions we'll be having in, in yeah. a future. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Because still the question list is going on. I have still uh, 15, 20 more questions. Uh, which Absolutely. we are uh, okay. okay. uh, shortlisted, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. still, yeah. there are uh, at least uh, 12. If we take them, the questions were reaching up to 100, uh, 100 plus questions. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, okay. So, I think we may plan a next session uh, in the yeah. maybe within a week of time. And yeah, and meanwhile, we can take uh, two, three questions if uh, they are coming up in the chat box. Okay, Sunil Ranjan Mahapatra is asking, what's your view on LRFD method of foundation design compared to conventional factor of safety approach? If you can give very quick insight on this. See, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, soil is having a definite strength. Okay, mm -hmm. so whatever your approach is having, the final thing should be the capacity. Okay, mm. or mm. you know, there are two criteria shear mm. strength and the settlement. Mm. Okay, mm. so if you are having more settlement, then mm. you need to reduce your uh, mm. bearing pressure. So that yes. is always there. So, whatever methodology you are applying, there mm. is a fixed thing as a capacity of the soil. You cannot change with the different methodology. Mm. Okay, so uh, that's the thing. So mm. we can actually we can discuss with him in a long this thing because uh, actually this is not the right uh, subject. Yes, yes. But we, so okay. we will mark this point and definitely I yeah. think we can have a very detailed uh, yeah. one hour conversation only on this, this uh, topic, right? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. In, in a detail. So bearing capacity is fixed for soil. It, you mm. cannot mm. change with the different methodology. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That is yeah, safe allowable bearing capacity. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm just taking a couple of random comments. So Miraj is asking, as stone columns are uh, in very much used now, what do you think that will it replace the pile foundations in future? No, no. See, the, uh, stone columns is having a different concept and uh, mm -hmm. different methodology. Okay. And mm -hmm. pile is mm -hmm. having its different area. So I don't feel that it is going to replace. But you know, you need to have case to case basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a lot of confusion of stone column uh, people. So, mm -hmm. in, in fact, you know, sometimes people are using stone column for the improvement of the clay material. But that function is entirely different. It is mm -hmm. not the load bearing function, it is mm -hmm. actually escaping, escaping of the water from the soft mm -hmm. clay stratification. Mm -hmm. So we'll discuss in detail if he's having some, uh, he wants some clarity, we'll discuss with him personally. Yes. 
on this yes level. and and just to make it very sure like stone columns yeah. will be effective only for let's say maximum depth of 10 meter otherwise they will become slender Absolutely. so Absolutely. you know they, we cannot use depth beyond 10 meter uh, but pile yeah. foundation can go you know at a much much deeper depth right? much deeper and uh, you know the there is actually like you know we are talking about this uncertainties in geotechnical mm -hmm. engineering mm -hmm. See, pile give lot of respite in that. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you are with piles, stone column, yeah, as you said, for a smaller depth, or uh, mm -hmm. not for the clay stratification. That yes. is important. It's for the sandy stratification densification. Yes. Okay, if you are using for the clay stratification, that function is entirely different. Mm -hmm. It is a function of a band drain or maybe the stone drains. You can say, mm -hmm. yeah. So that yes. water will be scaping out. You are improving the clay started question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Neeraj has asked a very interesting question. As a structural engineer, what skills and knowledge of geotechnical engineering should he have? <laughs> See, the important is uh, first of all, difference between bearing pressure and safe bearing mm -hmm. capacity. Mm -hmm. You should actually able to distinguish between these two. So bearing pressure is the pressure which is coming from the superstructure and maybe some portion of the soil mm -hmm. and capacity is the strength of the stratification where it will be resting and mm -hmm. always bearing capacity should be more than the bearing pressure that is the fundamental thing you should remember but uh, i would like to have a purely geotechnical engineer okay <laughs> so that <laughs> it will be a very great combination so, structural and geotechnical so let me answer this uh, in in short like uh, from the yeah. perspective of a structural yeah, absolutely so what, right I, would, what i would suggest that always uh, you should interact with the uh, geotechnical engineer who is on on board for, let's say for the project and yeah. just try to understand that what are the kind of soils how the spc has been derived then what absolutely. could be uh, the impact if you are uh, placing your foundations very closely so to uh, to uh, so in short you should have a detailed conversation with uh, with him so yeah. in this process gradually you will understand the basics and fundamentals of geotechnical engineering mm -hmm. in the long run absolutely. right yeah, absolutely. Okay. yes yes Okay, and the interface between geotechnical and structural engineering is of paramount importance, right? Whenever paramount important, you know, and uh, see, yeah. yes, and yes, see, yeah. from the time I am interacting with you, you know, the my actually thoughts are very much firm on this. So there mm. should not be any isolation work for a geotechnical mm. engineer or uh, structural engineer. There should mm. be always an interaction. Okay, and like mm. that structure does, we need to also have that interaction. Yes. Technical as yes. well as the structure. Yes. 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 Okay, Narayanan is telling that uh, looking forward to more sessions. So definitely we'll be planning yes, okay. more these yes. kind of sessions. It was just a first basic introductory session on yes. on this topic. Okay, so we'll be having more yes. focused session in the future, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so that's so all for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah before yeah, we please. sign off, just uh, quickly, I will tell our people, uh, who are, okay. whoever is actually uh, seeing this, we are going to conduct uh, one course on safe bearing capacity. Okay. Okay. And uh, that will be around, uh, with initial estimates, it is around two or 12 hours, maybe more yeah. than that. So yeah. that will be one thing. And we are working on IS codes. Okay. Yes. Even Euro codes also. Yes. So we are going to discuss our foundation IS codes in future. And since see these IS codes are now some codes are of 80s or some codes of 60s. So we need to analyze these codes on present perspective. So modern uh, philosophy is what. So we are going to take one by one IS code in uh, next uh, sessions. So we'll inform you which course we are taking in future. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there are many, many interesting conversation planned in the in yes, yes. future. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. So that's all. Uh, and bye bye from our side. So we are signing off now. Okay. And thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank Vivek. You. Vivek. Good Vivek evening, for everyone. Your, yes. Yeah. Spending your valuable time uh, with us yeah. and answering thank the you. questions which we received. Okay. Thank you. And thank you all thank the you. participants. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.